this heat sink is not coming off so I just took the controller off of it and I'm gonna pressure wash it with this heat sink on I broke one bolt you can see under there I think it was that one right there all right getting ready to pressure wash I can work on it without getting dirty all right so I got the new steering box rebuilt or what I'm calling rebuilt got the new bushing in that new sleeve bushing and it wasn't that hard it's actually a lot easier going back together than it was coming apart once I knew how to get this thing out little puzzle piece combination you got to flip pull it out you'll know what I'm talking about if you try it but all the play is gone, so that massive play I had in the steering. Now when you touch the steering, very responsive. So you see my movement here directly to the wheels now. And you can see this box is no longer flexing like it was. So that is a good thing. The battery cage came in today, the new um, aluminum one. It's sitting on the front porch right now. Not sure I'll get to it today. Get that lift kit. I should get it next week and get it on, get the motor put on it. Currently have the cart, our front end tore down, putting a lift kit on. It finally arrived. So working on the front now and then we'll go to the rear. Well folks, she stands on all fours. It's slightly sloping to the front end, but when I get the batteries in there, it should level out. I installed the battery tray today, the new tray. The lift kit looks great, except for those small tires, wheels. Still waiting on shocks. Alright, my next steps is 
to install the controller, put the motor on. I got my motor back from Plum Quick. It's right here. It's the Bandit upgrade. It's supposed to add about 30% more torque and 30% more speed. We'll see. All right, guys. So the next step, I uh, got the batteries in. I've been, I've uh, been driving it actually. I just put a, a board across the batteries there and and took it around the block. I did okay with it. Um, I actually took it down to the backyard into the woods. Uh, that was a mistake because I ended up stripping out this rear hub. I had to order a new hub for it. But I didn't have the hubs torqued down. They need at least 90 pounds of torque on those hubs on the rear hubs and um, I didn't do that I just kind of snugged it up like you would a, a trailer hub or something put my pin in it but uh, I was reading about it and and it requires at least 90 I actually have about a hundred pounds on each hub now so maybe that'll help out and I still got the original hub on this side but it's pretty strong it's not quite as strong as i want it to be it's still a little bit slow going up hills i think the issue is going to be this 300 amp controller it's just not enough for this this new motor that i have or that i had rebuilt uh, i have welding cables on here now two gauge and i think these are four gauge up here so uh, we have all heavier cables now that's certainly going to help us out. Uh, so now the next step is shocks. And we're about to put those on. So I just got the shocks in. They are uh, actually car shocks. They're Monroe. And you can see the model number there. Model number 31125. 31125. I got four of them all the same and the reason I had to is because with this lift kit my old factory shocks even the new ones that I ordered that are made for the golf cart they were a little short and I was going to have to compress the front end down to get them to bolt up the rear same way I was going to, have to compress them down about an inch and it probably would have worked but I don't want that shock holding all that compression so a few guys online recommended this Monroe uh, for their easy go and on some club carts and they say they work fine. So we're about to find out. All right, so I got the first one on. There's a couple of things. I went and used my old smaller caps here because I was afraid this larger cap was going to dig in to the side of the frame before it got tight. The same thing here, the way this lift kit worked, I had to use the smaller cap off my old shock. I used the the new bushing though and it's sort of it's kind of coming outside the the cap. These are much larger caps for these for these bushings that come with the shock, but if I would have used these, this metal would have dug into the side of that bracket before I could get that bushing compressed same thing with this one I was able to use the larger up here because um, I have more of a flat surface and I'm hoping I can use the larger ones on the back but if not I have my old cap so just keep that in mind you might want to save your your old caps if you're using this shock on yours especially with this front lift kit and do yourself a favor when you're before you put the shocks on and take you a, a wire brush or something and grind that paint off there that nut nut is hard to get on if you don't all right folks shocks are on out real well 
So if you got a lift kit and having issues with your stock shocks, I think this is the fix. And now I've pretty much done everything that I need to do before putting the body back on. I was going to try to find a uh, plastic body to put on it instead of this metal. You see it's got some damage, but I haven't found one, so probably going to pull this out, clean it up. Been sitting out here for a while. Or I may just leave the body off and make a rat ride out of it. That's what I'd like to do. My wife really encouraged me to put the body back on it though. Of course, if I did a rat ride, I'd want it lowered. And now I've lifted it. Well, I was able to pound that dent out a little bit. It's straight now anyway. It's got a pretty good scratch there, but, but it came out pretty straight. So if I can fix this molding issue and we'll get it buffed out, clean it up a little bit. All right, guys, I will do one last update and I'll go ahead and post this video. This will be part two. There'll be a part three coming. I went ahead and got the rear body on. I got the uh, bed put back on, trying to do some work around the yard. Um, I don't have the front cap back on yet. I don't have it back on yet because I haven't decided yet what I'm doing with the front end. I need to put some new tie rod ends on there and get everything lubed up. But I haven't done that yet. I need to replace the controller. This is a 300 amp Curtis remanufactured controller, come to find out. It's just too weak, it's shutting down on me. And when it's cold, it won't hardly climb a hill. Once it warms up, I get my power back, but then if I keep using it, keep putting it under a load, it'll go into a thermal shutdown and just die until it cools off. So I'm pretty sure it's the speed controller. I think at this point it has to be, I don't know what else it could be. You'll remember that motor is remanufactured. The batteries are new. They check out, test out good. The uh, forward control switch is new. I have two gauge welding cable. Uh, so all my cables are new. So process of elimination, it pretty much has to be that speed controller. And it's showing all the classic symptoms. I'll take you for a ride here. Let's just see how it runs. I will be replacing the seats as well. And then we'll get bigger wheels and tires once I get the speed controller issue worked out. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and convert the Ford reverse controller to the electronic solenoid type. steering wheel as well. Now this is where we're going to struggle because the speed controller is cold. Let's see we're almost at a crawl here. That was a really steep hill. So that's it for this video folks i'll go ahead and post this one as part two and look out for part three i'll post it once i get the speed controller issue worked out and we'll see if we have fixed that issue 
Until next time, folks, give me a thumbs up. Thanks.